Hey, it's Kelly. Welcome back to my channel where we talk all about gentle skincare, sometimes self-care, and today we're talking January faves and fails. This is the video where I get to share with you all of the products that made a big impression on me this month, some good, some bad. So if you're so ready to jump into the products, give the video a big thumbs up and let's get started. So first up is the Pillow Talk Derm Major Fade Serum. Now this is something, this is a brightening serum that you can use all over your face, but I wanna let you know this is actually something I use as a spot treatment for hyperpigmentation. You can really use it either way, quite honestly. So I was really impressed with the ingredients list of this product first and foremost. The active brightening ingredients that they're, that they're using here are incredibly effective, and I really love to see them actually combined into this formula because they're brightening ingredients that work on uh, hyperpigmentation and unevenness right on the skin in different ways. And I think that that is really the key to success when you're looking for a very effective brightening serum. Sometimes just one ingredient doesn't do it, especially if your hyperpigmentation is stubborn. I'm talking, you know, the post-inflammatory marks from acne. I'm talking melasma, sun damage, things like that. Um, they're using some really, really effective brightening ingredients. Alpha Arbitate really really fantastic uh, very effective kojic acid I love that kojic acid was included here because this is such an effective brightener for the skin but it's somewhat uncommon uh, ingredient to find in a lot of skincare products. You don't hear about it as often. It's very popular in J Beauty products. That's where I first learned about kojic acid many, many years ago, and it was so helpful for me for fading sun damage on my skin. I love kojic acid soap. So, so effective. Um, works really, really fast. But like I said, it's not common to find it as uh, the main brightening agent in a lot of uh, skincare products. Then of course they're using good old niacinamide. Less impressive, a little boring, but you know, you gotta you gotta give it up to niacinamide. It can be very effective for brightening the skin. And I think what really impressed me was the use of gallic acid because you know the other ingredients really do help with the pigmentation, but gallic acid can actually help with redness on the skin. And I think that's what kind of pushed this product just a little bit more into like that maybe holy grail status territory for brightening. A lot of the spots that I used this on were from a post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation from pimples. I got some very unexpected breakouts on my face after having very clear skin for a long time and I was like no and they were very dark because the the pimples were like those angry irritated types of you know inflamed breakouts and so uh yeah I was left with some pretty bad hyperpigmentation and I was slowly working on it you know slowly fading it and then I busted this bad boy out and started using this as a spot treatment and I could not believe how fast how effective this worked I mean within a matter of about a week I was noticing like massive massive improvement and like I mentioned that gallic acid really surprised me because I had um, hyperpigmentation on my nose from a very 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 traumatic type of pimple traumatic to the skin you know and to me really really deep it was really bad and not only did I have the the brown you know melanin from the inflammation but I also had redness um, from that from that traumatic event on the skin as well and the you know the the brown spot was starting to slowly fade from my regular skincare routine from my tretinone and tranexamic acid and everything but the redness was what was really stubborn and what, what wasn't changing at all and what was the most obvious on my face and within about a week of using this the redness started to fade away I could not believe that because that is pretty notorious for being hard to treat with topical skincare. So I was very, 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 very impressed with how fast this worked, impressed with the ingredients. This is almost like a like a little like targeted type of a vial, which I think is cool. You just press down on the pen in the back here, and then you can get like a very even amount of product right onto the tip of your finger from from this but also the texture it's kind of like a cream creamy type of serum it's not like buttery and thick and rich but it has a little bit more um heft to it than like your runny gel like serums and so that also lends itself to being able to just kind of spot treat certain areas on your face if you choose to use it in that way what this has done for my skin is like amazing so um i kind of 
almost didn't want to like this, but I am so, 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 so blown away by the results. And I think especially if you're struggling with the stubborn, stubborn hyperpigmentation, this could be worth looking at. Let's talk BU Five Minute Instant Restore Caffeine Mask. This is so like silky and creamy and moisturizing. It's the perfect wash off mask for the winter months. I really, really love how this makes my skin feel restored, I think is actually a really great word for it. So ingredients wise, you know, I was really surprised to not find the ingredient caffeine on the list here because oftentimes that's, you know, the, the ingredient that they're using when they say caffeine. Um, but they're actually using green tea extract in here, and that's technically a caffeinated ingredient, if you will. I'm not even mad about the, like, kind of strange, you know what I mean, name to ingredients. I'm not mad about that at all because green tea is such an amazing ingredient for the skin. Fabulous antioxidants. Um, it is got so many different um, great like minerals and vitamins for the skin, polyphenols. There's also some other great ingredients in here. We have niacinamide, some nourishing oils like rose hip and linseed oil, and of course, lots of shea butter. And you can really see that in the texture. Um, it definitely has this like buttery, moisturizing feel, but I don't think that it's overwhelming on the skin. And I think that sometimes like the really moisturizing masks can be actually hard to wash off. Um, and they leave kind of like almost like a wax or a filminess on the skin this doesn't feel like that but it does like if you have those dry areas it just kind of goes into every little dry area and just like relieves it and soothes it and smooths it and conditions it and it just feels really good you know we are in some of the coldest months of winter right now where I live we got dumped with 12 inches of snow this month and then we got like this cold snap like minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit wind chill like you can't go outside like my dog was struggling to go outside it was really really tough on her especially but not safe to go outside super super cold and that means really really drying really harsh on the skin and so I was really feeling it I also uh, was battling COVID <laughs> a couple of weeks ago you can still kind of hear it a little bit in my sinuses and so I have a lot of dryness around my nose too it's just the winter blahs for my skin right five minute restore. That's what this promises. And I feel like that's what it gives. You know, it just feels for this perfect moment. It just really restores my winter blah skin. It's a really nice creamy wash off mask. Um, and as soon as I started using it, it fell into my regular rotation of wash off masks. Next up is the Benton Sika Gel Sunscreen Serum. So I actually picked this up um, at the beginning of December. It was kind of like one of those wild card picks. Um, I was a brown through yes style putting an order together and I was like I gotta make the you know I'm like I'm just a few um, a few dollars away from the premium shipping where they send it to you like really fast through FedEx I'm like okay I really want to make that shipping so I was looking around and I came across this sunscreen and I was like oh I didn't know that Benton had an even newer sunscreen I knew they came out with um, like a handful of new sunscreens I want to say in 2022 um, but this was released in 2023 and I hadn't heard anything about it I hadn't seen it at all. I hadn't like heard any reviews. It's certainly not a hype product, that's for sure. And so I was like very, very intrigued. So I checked out the ingredients, looked for, you know, my skin sensitivities. They weren't on the list. So I threw it into my order, not expecting much. Quite honestly, I was like, well, it's a new, it's a new product that I can, you know, you know, maybe I can review it or something. Once I started using it, I was like, hey, this is a little bit different than some of the sunscreens that have been coming out in the last year or so. And I mentioned this, I did a review, a dedicated review. So if you want to learn a lot more about this sunscreen, I would definitely say check that video out. Um, but I have to say that like I've been feeling a lot of fatigue with sunscreens in the last year because they all seem the same. There are some different things about this though that really made it stand out in my mind and really wanted, made me want to do that dedicated video to it because I think that it, it offers something slightly more unique. And I think the biggest reason that is is because the finish of of this well it, it, they're calling it a sunscreen serum it's not those essency type of sunscreens it's not quite that texture we do have that gel cream it's hydrating it's lightweight it's uh has no white cast it's got a really great uh, easy comfortable texture it doesn't pill 
But what was really interesting about this is how fast it dried on my skin. It didn't leave, you know, some of those essence -y type sunscreens just feel like always a little wet and a little shifty on the skin because they're usually so emollient and quite dewy that it feels like you could just kind of like wipe them off like they're maybe not 100% settling onto your skin which can be a big problem for protection right this really uh, dries and settles on the skin quite quickly and almost to a slightly grippy type of finish like a very 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 lightweight primer kind of finish it's not like silicone-y that's not what I'm saying it's still so very lightweight and breathable but there's just a little bit of grip to it it's not greasy at the top and that is so nice because it means it, it works super well underneath makeup but it actually means that the, the film that it's forming on your skin, that protective film is actually doing the job it's supposed to do, which is protect you from the sun. So it's just really nice overall. It's kind of a neutral type of finish too. It's not highly dewy or glossy. Um, it is, like I said, neutral. And so it just kind of works with what you already have. If you're already a little naturally dewy, it will maintain that, but it won't add to it. It won't make you like a disco ball. If you are a little bit more matte it's going to maintain that it's not going to add to your skin it's just going to work with what you already have they have included silica in here which helps with that grippy finish and everything but it also helps with a little bit of oil control throughout the day as well so i think especially if you do have that oily skin type and those dewier types of finishes really backfire on you like they really do you dirty by four o'clock in the afternoon you know what i'm saying and i i've definitely experienced it i do have some oil in the t-zone i i know the the uh the problems with like wiping your sunscreen and your grease and your layer off of your forehead and you're just like ugh. This actually helps to control some of that. This does not add to your oil. It's not, it's going to actually help control some of your oil throughout the day. And so that's why I said in a sea of sameness, this feels slightly different. And I think it has a really nice place for those who maybe are struggling with that shininess in their skincare. A quick ode to the Toradin Solid In Ceramide Lip Essence. I finally got my hands on the lip balm. You know, I love this line um, from Toradin. I did review the cream and the essence from this line um, back in the summer of 2023. Definitely check that video out. A Tale of Two Ceramides. I also talked about the Skin 1004 Pro bio Sika line uh, in that video big big fan love 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 finally got the lip balm in that yes style order and I am so obsessed with this and I I expected that I would be you know ceramides cholesterol fatty acids amazing for your face skin amazing for your lips too so important to keep those hydrated and keep that skin strong in the, the you know winter blah months for sure I'm so prone to dry lips but I love that it has this really pretty gloss to it as well I actually topped my lip tint off with it just now did you notice it has has a really pretty reflective gloss to it that makes your lips look really plump and beautiful but it's not sometimes I feel glosses can be a little bit rough on your lips uh, especially if you're prone like I said to flaky lips or very dry lips this feels like that very very soothing very skin respective lip balm very healing but it gives you more of that cosmetic like glossy kind of look that you might be um, searching for and there's no fragrances in here which is great because I I very I can get I'm very prone to lip eczema especially in the winter months so I have to be very careful about what I put on my lips in the winter months but I also I don't know what ingredient it is I've never quite figured it out but there's some lip products that really irritate my throat and make it feel really scratchy and um, I'm always on the lookout for that and this didn't do that either so yeah just really quick just a very quick review super super nice really really pretty love this lip gloss so let's talk about the fail of the month I know you've been waiting for this but before I tell you what it is I want to give you a disclaimer okay this is not my final review these are not my final thoughts about the the product itself I wanted to talk about it because I am hesitant to quite honestly I don't like to talk about products before I've finished like a full testing period with it and then say for sure I feel like it's a yay or for sure I feel like it's a nay but this is something that's getting so incredibly popular so 
hyped up. I'm getting asked about it daily here on YouTube that I want this to stand as sort of like a, a touch base or an update. I'm going to do a full video on this product after I finish the full testing period. So please just know that this is just some information, but it's not like a hard and fast review right now. Okay. <laughs> what is it? It is the VT Riedel Shot 100 Essence. You have been hearing about this from everyone, everywhere. This is becoming so ridiculously popular. And I have to say, I, I don't get it. I, right now, I don't like it. <laughs> so this is a product that contains a lot of centella. We've got centella extract, um, the active compounds of centella. There's also some really great amino acids in here. It's all about um, your skin barrier, first and foremost, and keeping your skin in a healthy state. But it also claims to help refine texture on the skin and overall just like really improve the look, tone, and texture, really even out your skin. And it's um, also making that major claim of helping to address the look of pores and large pores on your skin. The way that they're doing this is through their Riedel, which is, sounds like needle, and that's exactly right. They're using little like micro needles in this product that open up pathways within your skin that allow not only the products, uh, the ingredients in this product to get deeper into your skin to become more effective for you, but also opening up those pathways for the rest of your skincare routine. Those are the claims, that's the marketing, right? I've heard people uh, describe it as like, oh, it kind of, it stimulates your skin um, it, you know like it's just like it's just like little stimulation or warmth no it feels like pinpricks all over your face and I have a pretty high tolerance honestly for pain I think and I've used other like faux micro needling products like the Medicube micro needling device kind of gives you those little like pinprick sensations and I can handle that just fine but there's something about this that is so uncomfortable not painful but just uncomfortable putting this into your skin it's just like it just does not feel good and um, I do like to layer up a lot of skincare and I did find when I would put other skincare on top I would get that like pins and needles feeling again in my skin um, because it kept shifting those needles around so the real needle technology it's real it's definitely there um, and I find it pretty uncomfortable. I just couldn't get used to it. I thought, oh, maybe, you know, the first couple applications were going to be just kind of weird and then I would get used. To I just feel like I never got used to it. Like, it's just not joyful to apply. Just, it's very uncomfortable for me. I don't like it. Um, but it also made me break out. Uh, I was very surprised by that. And I've heard people talking about purging with this product, which I find a little odd because purging is really something that happens with exfoliants like AHAs, BHAs, azelaic acid, tretinoin, retinoids, things that increase skin cell turnover are what can speed up the pimple process in your skin. Purging just means that it speeds up the pimples that are already in your skin. But this it, product doesn't contain any of those types of ingredients, so I'm a little unsure that I should chalk that up to purging, you know what I'm saying? Um, I was also getting breakouts in areas I don't usually get um, my breakouts. I usually get them around my U zone um, and I was getting them like in my eyebrows and stuff and that's not a normal place for me to get um, pimples. They were also the very inflamed, you know what I mean? Like very, um, very swollen, painful, you know, bleeding types of pimples. Another indication that this was more of an irritation type of breakout than it was a purging type of breakout. Um, so that's how I feel about this product. <laughs> That's where it stands. That's why it's a fail of January. I have some ideas about this. I want to uh, incorporate this back into my routine and try it in a different way. I just need to get my skin clear again. I was like, I can't really afford to have breakouts right now. Like, sorry, just can't. <laughs> um, but um, now I want to go back in, try a couple of different things. But I guess my first impression or my first idea about this product is it may not be suitable for sensitive skin. I think maybe it's just too strong for me personally. It's just not a good match possibly for my skin but I want to try a few things out um, before I give you a full review give you all of my thoughts all of my opinions 
Um, yeah, it's a really strange product. Uh, a lot of people are very excited about it. I think because it is different is why it's getting so much attention. Um, but for me, I don't know that different is always super duper good or super appropriate for all skin types. My final word on this for now would be to proceed with caution and don't let the hype get to you too much just yet. And for this month's wrap up, I'm gonna take it into the self-care corner. Um, I wanna shake up this format just a little bit for the coming year for the monthly favorites. I'm still gonna be sharing lessons and things with you, but I also wanna open up the format to some other maybe favorite things um, that aren't maybe skincare or beauty related here in this portion of the video. So as I mentioned, I did come down with COVID <laughs> this month and that really forced me to not like take a break or to relax, but it forced me to stop completely. It really kicked me um, on my butt for sure. And then on top of that, we also had, um, like I, I mentioned, a blizzard, essentially. Uh, we got 12 inches of snow, maybe more, and then a really bad cold snap as well. I mean, so cold that they were like canceling schools and stuff because it's just too, too dangerously cold to go outside. So there's just been a huge block uh, here in January that is just it has basically been like stop don't slow down no more rest hibernate if you are in the northern hemisphere I think what I'm about to say is going to really resonate and if you're not if you're going through your summer right now take this and put it in your back pocket for your winter but you know the earth is inviting us to hibernate our society tells us that we shouldn't be doing that. We should be productive, we should be going, we should be doing, doing, doing. And like Earth is like, just be, just be, it's okay. You can chill out for a little bit. And so I've really been trying to embrace that. I feel like all the signs, like I said, have been saying, slow down. I've been really embracing audiobooks. And I usually listen to my audiobooks while I do something, but right now I've been trying to just like, I've just been trying to like lay down and like listen to an audiobook. You know what I'm saying? It's a different for an experience when you're not trying to do and pay attention just pay attention to the audiobook I've been listening to the shining audiobook it's on Spotify for premium users I've read the shining so many times I have an old paperback from the 70s that I absolutely adore um, but I don't have the time or the energy right now for like physical books but the audiobook whoa, it's like a different experience. And it was like, it's almost like turning out all the lights out and like listening to like a ghost story. It's like a, such a different experience. So I definitely recommend trying something out like that. Um, if you want, just like listening to an audiobook, maybe a scary one if you can. I also, um, just movie, movie nights, movie afternoons, you know what I mean? Fleece sweatpants, cozy up with a blanket, maybe have a nice cup of tea and watch a movie. I watched May, December um, on Netflix this month and wow, I was really blown away by that. It really made me think so much about, you know, the media event around, because it's loosely based on the Mary Kay Letourneau story. It really made me think about how the media got that whole story completely wrong. Um, and it really made me think about it from a very different perspective, like I said, than what the media narrative had been for so long. Um, and just um, like really fantastic, amazing performances. Julianne Moore is like, oh, I love her so much. So anyways, I got to do that kind of stuff this month and I really loved it. And I'm looking forward to doing some more of that type of, of um, restorative rest and activities like that and you know really embracing more being than doing in this hibernation period um it's what winter is asking me to do and i am really trying to to heed that call so i'm curious what were your favorite products from january or maybe some of your favorite self-care things that you did this month let me know in the comments below if you loved this video you watched all the way through and you're not subscribed please i'd be so honored if you would hit subscribe and come join our community turn on notifications so you're never out of the loop. I love you so much. Thanks for being here with me today. I really hope that you are healthy, happy, and safe, and I'll talk to you in the next video.